Good afternoon and welcome to our third webinar on local school wellness policies. If you have any questions about the content discussed in this webinar, you can email your questions directly to Zaina Britta at zainab.rida at nebraska.gov. This webinar also will be posted on the NDA website for further comment. This third webinar on the final rules of the USDA Local School Wellness Policy is part of the 2010 Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act focuses on nutrition guidelines. As a reminder, we are providing these series of webinars to help you revise your school wellness policy as per the USDA requirements. We will go through each element of the local school wellness policy, share the final requirements, resources, and examples of policy language for each element that you might want to include in your wellness policy revision. The outline of today's webinar is to provide a summary of last week's webinar, introduce the final provisions of the nutrition guidelines, highlight some of the administrative review questions regarding the nutrition guidelines element, and provide some possible answers for these questions. We will identify best practices regarding this section, and we will finally share some team nutrition resources to help schools in meeting the nutrition guidelines requirements. On July 29, 2016, USDA finalized regulations to create a framework and guidelines for written wellness policies established by local education agencies, or LEAs. The final rule requires LEAs to begin developing a revised local school wellness policy during the 2016-2017 school year. LEAs must fully comply with the requirements of the final rule by June 30, 2017. The new regulations require districts to include public involvement, nutrition guidelines, nutrition education, nutrition promotion, public notification, physical activity and education, and monitoring and evaluation. Last week we highlighted the first element of the school wellness policy, public involvement. The final rule indicated there must be inclusion by, from LEAs to allow parents, students, representatives of the Food Service Authority, teachers of physical education, school health professionals, the school board, school administrators, and the general public to, to participate in the development, implementation, and periodic review and update of the local school wellness policy. LEAs include in their written local school wellness policy a plan for involving these stakeholders. The broader stakeholder involvement ensures coordination across the school environment and throughout the community. Today, we will be focusing on the second element of the school wellness policy, nutrition guidelines. The final rule requires that a local school wellness policy include nutrition guidelines for all foods and beverages available to students on each participating school campus under the LEA during the school day. This requirement is consistent with the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act, ensuring that policies include guidance about foods and beverages available for sale is consistent with regulations governing school meals and competitive foods for sale in schools, or the Smart Snacks in School guideline, and also encourages districts to establish standards for foods made available but not sold to students during the school day on campuses, such as part of rewards and celebrations. To align the meals served under the school lunch program and the school breakfast program with the dietary guidelines, USDA set new meal pattern requirements that are specific to the school meals beginning July 1, 2012. The new meal pattern requirements that schools offer more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, that they offer only fat-free or low-fat milk, and provide reduced sodium content of school meal substantially over the time, as well as controlling for saturated fat, calorie levels, and minimizing trans fats. They are to ensure that meals offered through the school breakfast and lunch program meet these minimum nutrition standards. 
as well as adopting policies to ensure that all foods and beverages available on the school campus and at school events contribute toward eating patterns that are consistent with the dietary guidelines for Americans. Regulations also require that they provide food options that children are not getting enough of, including low-fat dairy and fat-free dairy, vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. We also need to ensure that healthy snacks and foods are provided in vending machines to follow these regulations. At the simplest level, weight gain, weight loss, and maintenance is about energy balance. Energy taken in from foods and beverages versus energy expended through physical activity and the body's normal activities. Here is a graphic from the CDC describing these two key elements as a scale. When intake exceeds output, you will gain weight. When output exceeds input, you will lose weight. If you are roughly in balance, you will maintain your weight. This is a relatively simple concept, but can be more difficult to do in real life. School wellness policies must include nutrition guidelines to promote student health and reduce childhood obesity for all foods available in each school district. All the menus served and foods sold in schools must meet the nutrition standards by reducing the daily sodium intake to no less than 1500 milligrams for children, consuming less than 10% of calories from saturated fatty acids by replacing them with mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids, consuming less than 300 milligrams per day of dietary cholesterol, Keeping trans fatty acid consumption as low as possible by limiting foods that contain synthetic sources of trans fat such as partially hydrogenated oils and by limiting other solid fats, reducing the intake of calories from solid fats and added sugars, and limiting the consumption of foods that contain refined grains, especially refined grain foods that contain solid fats, added sugars, and sodium. Food and nutrients of focus that need to be increased include the following. An increase of vegetable and fruits, eating a variety of vegetables, especially dark green, red, orange, vegetables, beans, and peas, consuming at least half of grains as whole grains, increasing whole grain intake by replacing refined grains with whole grains, increasing intake of fat-free and low-fat milk products, such as milk, yogurt, cheese, and fortified soy beverages, choosing a variety of protein foods, which include seafood, lean meat and poultry, eggs, beans, peas, soy products, and unsalted meat, nuts, and seeds. Increase the amount and variety of seafood consumed by choosing seafood in place of some meats and poultries, replacing protein foods that are high in solid fats with choices that are lower in solid fats, and calories and other sources of oil. Using oils to replace solid fats whenever possible and choosing foods that provide more potassium, fiber, calcium, and vitamin D, which are all nutrients of concern in Americans diets. These foods include fruits, vegetables, whole grain, milk, and milk products. In the following portion of our presentation, we will address the 10 general guidelines for this element and present strategies for implementing each general guideline. Schools that participate in the school lunch program must meet the USDA requirements regarding breakfast and lunch menu patterns, offering free water, professional standards for schools and nutrition staff, competitive food, smart snack, fundraising and marketing information. Classroom rewards and celebrations are not required by the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act. However, it is a best practice to include these categories in your school wellness policy to be consistent with the rest of the food offered during the school day. Each guideline is important to school health and there is no priority order. We will be discussing the key components for each category, policy language, and resources to meet overall for this element. Let's begin with the first item on the nutrition guidelines list, meal service and times. The wellness policy language states, giving students a reasonable amount of time to eat breakfast and lunch is important for building healthy habits. 
Research has shown that students who have less than 20 minutes to eat school lunch were consuming less food, so there was more food waste. The School Nutrition Association conducted a survey in 2014 and found that the typical lunch period length is about half an hour. However, this includes travel time from the classroom to the cafeteria and the time spent in line waiting to be served. Short lunch periods continue to be a challenge for school nutrition professionals as they work to serve students in short periods of time to ensure students have adequate time to eat healthy options that are being provided to them. The Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act sets policy for USDA's school lunch and breakfast programs. Planning menus for these programs is an important part of the process that provides healthy meals for students. The wellness policy language states, according to the wellness policy executive summary, serving school breakfast may be the most cost effective and directly helpful element schools can do to improve student wellness. School breakfast participation in Nebraska, however, remains low, lower than the national average. So this is definitely an area that we can improve in. The Nebraska Alternative School Breakfast Challenge in 2015-16 encouraged more schools to implement alternative school breakfast. And of the 61 schools that participated, 19 increased school breakfast participation by at least 25%. This challenge promoted the adoption of an alternative breakfast model such as breakfast in the classroom, second chance breakfast, and grab and go. School menus, five components. School breakfast and lunch menus follow a food-based meal pattern. These foods may be served from food groups called components. There are five of these components, meat, meat alternate, fruits, vegetables, grains, and milk. School breakfast must include, at a minimum, foods for the following three components, fruit, grain, and milk. School lunch requires that all five components are offered, and for each of these components, there are daily or weekly minimum portion requirements. It's important to mention that all grain bread items served must meet the USDA definition of whole grain rich. Whole grain rich products are foods that contain at least 50% or more of whole grains. It's also important to note that fruits and vegetables are now separate components, so both fruits and vegetables must be offered daily. The vegetable component requires classified vegetables in a subgroup. There are five vegetable subgroups, dark green, red, orange, dried beans and peas, starchy vegetables, and other. A weekly minimum requirement for each subgroup is also included. During the administrative review of a school meal program, program specialists will evaluate menus to determine if these meal pattern requirements are being met. Fruit and vegetable bars. Many schools find it easier to meet both the fruit and vegetable meal pattern requirements by offering students a variety of these two components on a fruit and vegetable bar, such as the one shown here. This gives students the opportunity to make choices and ensure they are offered the required fruits and vegetables each day of the week. The wellness policy language includes that waters, cups, jugs will be available in the cafeteria if a drinking fountain is not present. All water sources and containers will be maintained on a regular basis to ensure good hygiene and health standards. Sources and containers may include drinking fountains, water jugs, hydration stations, water jets, and other me methods for delivering drinking water. Providing students with access to safe, free drinking water and meal taint is one strategy schools can use to create an environment that supports health and learning. Here are examples of containers that may be used if water fountains are not accessible. Studies suggest that students drink more water when schools supply cups and provide water sources that are appealing, more so than traditional fountains. The beverage dispenser shown in the middle picture provides an appealing source of water. Cups should be placed on a clean tray or in a cup holder similar to the one shown here on the wall of the school cafeteria. Determining if students have safe access to safe, free drinking water is another component of the administrative review process. The Professional Standards Annual Continuing Education Training Requirement 
is another key provision of the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act of 2010, with the purpose of ensuring all schools' nutrition professionals have the training and tools necessary to ensure that all of America's children receive safe and nutritious meals. Training must be documented by the School Food Service Authority on training tracking logs. During an administrative review, these training logs must be available for review. This easy to use booklet is designed to help state agencies, school food authorities, and school nutrition professionals understand and apply the final rule for professional standards for school nutrition program personnel. This colorful resource can be used to promote professional standards to school nutrition staff, as well as the larger school, community, and state agency stakeholders. For more information, please visit School Meals Professional Standards site for more information and resources. Now we will turn our attention to the competitive foods requirements. Competitive foods and beverages are those foods that are sold at schools outside of and in competition with the federally reimbursed meal program. Examples of competitive foods and beverages include those sold during the school day in vending machines, which are not part of a reimbursable school meal. In student stores, via a la carte, in the school food service department, or as fundraisers sold during the school day. This slide provides examples of foods and beverages that may or may not meet the standards. It is important to note that each product must be evaluated individually as specific food profiles vary greatly from items that are similar. However, foods such as fruits, vegetables, granola bars, low-fat tortilla chips, peanuts, and light popcorn will likely meet the standards and are a good bet if you need healthy snack choices for students. Typically, foods that will not likely meet standards include fried foods such as donuts or desserts that are high in fat and calories. Also, items that are high in sugar such as cake, pastries, cookies, candy, and most energy bars will also not fit under the new meal program requirements. However, each food item is formulated differently and therefore you must critically evaluate each food item on an individual basis to determine compliance or non-compliance with the new standards. Smart snacks aim to improve student health and well-being. Increasing consumption of healthful foods during the school day and creating an environment that reinforces the development of healthy eating habits is a part of the school meal program goals. In a recent study, 40% of school-aged children consume at least one competitive food on a typical school day from a vending machine an a la carte line in the cafeteria or through school stores. A wellness policy should address the following. Limiting sugar content of foods and beverages, limiting fat content, serving size limitations for foods and beverages, limiting caffeine content of beverages, and excluding all candy. Competitive foods, smart snacks, are all foods and beverages sold to students on the school campus during the school day, other than those meals that are reimbursed under the programs authorized by the school lunch and the breakfast program. The school campus are all areas of the property under the jurisdiction of the school that are accessible to students during the school day. The school day is the period from the midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. So if school gets out at three o'clock, then after 3.30 is the official time when you could start providing foods that do not meet school meal program requirements. All foods sold during the school day must meet nutrition standards as outlined in the Smart Snacks guidance. There are no requirements for foods or beverages sold during non-school hours. For example, after the 30 minute time period has passed at the end of the school day, on weekends or in evenings. To support healthy food choices and improve student health and well-being, all foods and beverages outside the reimbursable school meal that are sold to students on the school campus during the school day must meet or exceed the USDA Smart Snacks Nutrition Standards. Nutrition Standards list criteria that determine which foods and beverages
can and cannot be offered on a school campus. One approach to setting standards is to increase the options available, such as requiring that schools offer fruits and vegetables at all locations where snacks are available. A second approach is to limit options such as stipulating that schools cannot sell unhealthy foods such as candy, soda, and high-fat snacks. These standards will apply in all locations and through all service areas where foods and beverages are sold which may include, but are not limited to, a la carte options in cafeterias, vending machines, school stores, and snacks or food carts. With the state regulation, there is a time factor in place, which applies to breakfast and lunch. No food or beverage can be sold to children anywhere on the school premises beginning one half hour before breakfast and or lunch service until one half hour after meal service. No other program or club can sell foods or beverages during these times that overlap or compete against the school meal service offered by the school lunch or breakfast program. If a vending machine is operated by a department or group other than the school nutrition program during this time frame, it must be off beginning one half hour before the breakfast or lunch service until one half hour after meal service. The list of foods of minimal nutrition value has been replaced by the Smart Snacks guidelines. This provision also includes standards and requirements for food marketing in schools. Food marketing is defined in the final rule as advertising and other promotions in schools. Food marketing commonly includes oral, written, or graphic statements made for the purpose of promoting the sale of foods or beverages produced by a manufacturer, seller, or other entity with commercial interest in the product. The marketing of products on the exterior of vending machines through posters, menu boards, coolers, trash cans, and other food service equipment, as well as cups used for dis beverage dispensing, are all subject to local school wellness policy standards indicating that foods that are provided need to meet standards as well as the logos of the foods provided. Under these standards, the logos and products marketed in these areas are required to meet the competitive food standards for all foods sold in school. Due to time limits of this webinar, we will discuss in more detail food marketing when we present the nutrition promotion webinar in the future. All foods that meet the final standards may be sold for fundraising during school hours. The final standards would not apply to items sold during non-school hours, weekends, or off-campus fundraising events, such as concessions during sporting events in the evening or during a school play. We recognize that school-sponsored fundraisers are an important method of financing school activities for students. The sale of food items that meet the final nutrition requirements as well as the sale of non-food items at fundraisers would not be limited in any way under the final rule. Fundraisers that do include bulk food items that are purchased for consumption at home or preparation at home, such as frozen pizza, frozen pretzels, or cookie dough tubs, may be sold during the school day. Foods that meet the standards may be sold during the school day, but not at meal time. No fundraising exemptions are allowed in Nebraska. This was as of the 2015-16 school year. It is also important to note that these standards do not apply to treats for birthdays or foods brought by the student from home. Candy, baked goods, soda, and other foods with little nutritional value are commonly used for fundraising at school. Selling these unhealthy foods sends the wrong message to students and promotes unhealthy habits. Fundraising supports students' health when it involves selling nutritious foods and beverages or selling non-food items such as wrapping paper, candles, pencils, erasers, or student artwork. Schools can also raise money and promote health at the same time through, for example, a walkathon, a field day, or jugg a juggling contest. Here are some policy language that you can include in your school wellness policy. Schools will use only non-food fundraisers and encourage the use of physical activity promoting events such as walkathons, jump rope for heart, fun runs, etc. Fruits and vegetables are offered a la carte. 
Here are some more examples of policy language you can use. All foods offered on the school campus will meet or exceed USDA Smart Snacks and School Nutrition Standards, including through celebrations and parties. The district will provide a list of healthy party ideas to parents and teachers, including non-food celebration ideas. Students really do enjoy doing art activities and physical activity games during celebrations. Classroom snacks bought by parents. The district will provide to parents a list of foods and beverages that meet smart, smart snack nutrition standards and rewards and incentives. The district will provide teachers and other relevant school staff a list of alternative ways to reward children for good behavior. Foods and beverages will not be used as a reward or withheld as punishment for any reason, such as performance or behavior concerns. There are many disadvantages to using food as reward. It undermines nutrition education being taught at school. It encourages overconsumption of high fat, high sugar foods. It teaches kids to eat when they are not hungry as a reward to themselves. Rewards support student health when they involve healthy non-food items or activities to recognize students for their achievement or good behavior if an intrinsic reward system is used. An example of rewards that can be used include stickers, books, or extra free time for recess or time with friends. Birthday parties and holiday celebrations provide a great opportunity for students to make healthy eating fun and exciting for students. Utilizing Pinterest can give you many ideas on just how to do this. Schools can also promote a positive learning environment by shifting the celebration focus away from food and to the child including things like games and crafts, will help your student to realize that food should not be the center of celebration. Having fewer parties and fewer celebrations on a monthly basis can allow you to spend more time focused on schoolwork. Here is an example of how to reward your students with non-food items. These ideas are long-lasting and have more impact than a food reward. Now I would like to share some very useful resources in helping to meet the nutrition guidelines. The first is this very colorful booklet which provides an overview of the smart snack standards and how to tell if a food or beverage meets the requirements. The second brochure is yellow and provides ideas to use healthy choices for fundraising and sell only non-food items or foods that meet smart snacks standards at school. There are four successful fundraising stories from schools that have raised money in a variety of ways. If you are looking for a fun way to promote nutrition and physical activity at your elementary or middle school, you can use this idea booklet to get started. This free event book has ideas for 20 themed events, large and small spotlights of real life events at team nutrition schools, as well as handouts, templates, and other free resources to support these events ways to team up for success with those in your school and community, and connections for school, home, the cafeteria, classroom, community, and the media. Here is a list of resources that help schools implement smart snacks in their facilities. You can find these at the Team Nutrition Resources page at healthymeals.nal.us.gov backslash smart snacks. I also encourage you to utilize team nutrition resources that focus on healthy school fundraising. It gives ideas on how to replace selling food items with healthy options. More resources on healthy school fundraisers are available through the Team Nutrition website. This is one of my favorite resources available. Is your smart snack a smart snack? Find out with the Alliance for Healthier Generation Smart Snack Product Calculator. This has been used by USDA Food Nutrition Services and found to be accurate in assessing product compliance with the federal requirements for smart snacks in schools. The calculator can be used on foods and beverages. Using the product calculator with healthy out of school time to assess the changes in your food offerings can really make this process a lot easier. 
Another good place for school wellness policy resources is our very own Nebraska Department of Education website. At the students PDF we have school competitive food guidelines, smart snacks and schools handouts, as well as a multitude of other resources on non-food rewards in the classroom, alternatives to food as reward, constructive classroom rewards, and good ideas for fundraisers that are healthy and promote the school nutrition guidelines, smart snack standards, and help support the school wellness policy requirements. If you have further questions, please scroll up to the first slide to find the email for the contacts for Zaina Brita. Email her any questions you might have about the school nutrition guidelines at this time.